afternoon. Hello, hello. Good afternoon, everybody. Hi there. Hi, hey, all right, I'm saying, saying hi. <laughs> Being very friendly. All right, I already got the beer going, so that's great. Um, hello, my name's Dave DeSandro, uh, at DeSandro on Twitter, so feel free to like, um, if you have any questions, you can, you can tweet me during the, during the talk. Uh, I work uh, for myself at my own little company called Metaphysy, uh, and there I, I created and uh, support little widgets, like one of them's masonry. This is like a, a free one that I made a while ago. Uh, it was used on Beyonce's Tumblr, so that's pretty much <laughs> the pinnacle of my existence. Um, also made this other thing, uh, Isotope. Isotope's a library, it's like a layout library. It allows you to do things like filtering and sorting. Um, Isotope's very prestigious, used by both TylerPerry.com and ColonelSanders.com. <laughs> so I'm, I'm doing well. Um, okay, so earlier this year, I, I, wanted to, I was looking at making widgets, and I wanted to create a, a better carousel. Uh, here's why. So I'm on a, a site, Bonobos, and I'm looking at shirts, and the shirts are in an image carousel, right? And, you know, it, it works. I can um, flick it, you know, flick left, flick right, and it moves, it has a nice transition. But there's something about it, it just like doesn't quite feel right. Like if I try to do like a couple quick flicks, it like might judder or something like that. Or if I do like a flick kind of halfway and maybe stop it, it, it still keeps on transitioning. Something about it is just kind of off. And if you compare this with just like scrolling on, on your phone, have you ever thought about like all like the little micro interactions that, that go on here where you're able to do, you know, a big motion and it moves a lot or a smaller motion and it moves a little bit or you could do like a couple motions and, you know, the momentum increases. And also my favorite like motion, like the flick and stop where you, you give it some speed and then you stop it on something you see here. This like feels like really good and I, you know, we kind of like take it for granted here. And this is kind of how I expected the carousel to work. And thinking about this, like this feels very similar to actually like moving objects in the real world. Um, so here's me just like flicking around uh, a metro card, right? Like I can do all the same things like when I was scrolling on my phone, uh, similar to the, to when I'm flicking around this this card. I can do big flicks, little flicks. If I had two hands, I could do the flick and stop. I, I was like recording it with one hand, right? So I had a um, so you won't see that motion here, but. So what uh, both the, the iPhone scrolling or phone scrolling and like the actual real world flicking, what they both have going on underneath the hood is physics. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Uh, and this is gonna be like practical UI physics. So uh, before we get into it, like why even add physics at all to your kind of UI? It's because we're monkeys. And even though we have uh, these futuristic devices, you know, that are like beaming up to the space. Um, we were hardwired with like monkey brains. And so when we use things in our, in the real world, like when we use our hands, when we use our monkey paws, we expect them to, to actually behave as, as if they would in the real world, you know? When you like throw a ball, it can like roll across or, you know, uh, things start slowing down due to friction here. That's not to say that you all, always need to like add physics to your uh, UI. I think we've all come across like sites that like too many things bounce around. When you're using a mouse, this is like a precision tool. And uh, it's kind of like using a pen. And you don't, you don't really feel like the weight of the pen like pressing down on your hand when you're writing a, on a pad, right? F physics doesn't really like play into there. So you might not need physics if you're having like lots of mouse interactions designing for desktop. But when we have like touch devices, this is kind of like a general um, motion. You know, when you use your finger, it's not as precise as like using an actual pen. And if you think about it like uh, swiping on a tablet, it's very similar to the motion of like swiping a page uh, in a book. And you expect that paper actually kind of has its own weight. You can kind of flick it across or you can give it like a small kind of motion there. So for touch devices and for like touch uh, applications, Physics is going to feel a bit more right. Now, um, if you've ever like tried to like, all right, I'm going to like do it. Like this is like this looks cool. I'm going to start like uh, investigating it. 
you might come across like a library, a physics library, something like Box2DJS or um, Chandler's Goblin Physics, which I, I just learned about in the previous talk and I'm going to check out afterwards. Now, Box2DJ, Box2D is like incredible. It allows you to do all these really uh, fun interactions here with like things that have mass and they can bounce off one another and there's like multiple collisions and it looks, you know, like something out of like Fast and the Furious if you do it right. Very impressive stuff. But I'm not looking to do all that. I'm just looking to do like kind of the basic like iPhone scrolling kind of thing. Um, and so here, this is Steve Jobs introducing scrolling, touch scrolling um, during the iPhone initial launch. I don't have audio here, so I'm going to have to like do my best Steve Jobs here. So he's like, all right, I'm, I'm in my music app here. I got my tabs and I have my artists. I'm looking at my artists. I want to see more artists. How do I see <laughs> more artists? I just touch and I scroll. And people are like, whoa, whoa. I said, yeah, isn't that cool? Look at that. And that the, I can keep on scrolling. It feels great. Check it out. I can bounce at the top. <laughs> like, does it bounce at the top again? Um, <laughs> um, like, could you imagine being the, like, seeing that for the first time? Like, how would you scroll before that time? You would expect to see some kind of like scroll bar on the side or maybe some kind of like jog wheel here. And this interaction, now we've like lived with it for eight years, it's kind of become like standard fare. We're, we're all kind of used to it. But for that carousel, like we still don't have it in some widgets. So that's the kind of thing I'm going for. I'm not necessarily going for uh, box 2 djs something that has lots of collisions. I just want to be able to do the things that Steve Jobs presented in 2007. So this is going to be practical stuff, which means that you can understand it. Box2D is incredible, um, but I, I don't understand it. It's like hundreds of thousands of lines of code. And it's going to be for the user interface. So this is not just you know, window dressing um, to make something that's like really visually engaging. This is actually for the benefit uh, of your users and to be part of like the seamless experience here. So let's take a look at the things that are going on just in iPhone scrolling. So the first and most obvious is that when the finger's pressed down there, the content scrolls with the finger. So that's something we can already do with like uh, jQuery UI draggable or any kind of like draggable widget. But then once the finger's released, the content, content keeps moving. So there's something like velocity or momentum happening. And not only does the content keep moving, but it eventually slows down, right? Just it's, the content slows after the scrolls. So there's something like friction or like another force happening in there. And finally, there's like that last sweet spot where at the top, he gets up there and it bounces back, um, which is something kind of special. So we'll get to that. So these are the kind of the things that I was just like looking to do with, with my own carousel. All right, so let's get into it. <laughs> let's learn some of the basics of, of our little physics model here. It all comes down to position. This is what the physics is going to be changing. When we're manipulating content on the screen, it's going to be changing the position of it on the screen. Position is changed by velocity, which is like speed in a direction. And velocity is changed by two things. Friction, and it's also changed by forces that affect velocity. So to explore some of these things, we're going to be writing some code. We're going to be writing some JavaScript. Um, and this is, this is the whole of our, of our physics model, um, our physics API. It's, uh, we basically have an update function that's going to be changing our uh, physics variables. V velocity changes position, friction changes velocity, and then we, there's like a little API, this function, apply force, where forces change velocity. All right, so I got a demo here we're going to be diving into. I'm going to have to do like an Elton John thing where I'm like at the keyboard but still singing. <laughs> Benny and the Jets. Um, okay. Let's look at a demo. And our first demo is just going to be dealing with the basis. We're going to be going over position, velocity, and friction. So here we have this red dot. And I'm calling this red dot a particle, but we all know it's a dot. Um, a particle is like a, is like a physics dot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so I can, I can set the 
position of my particle with uh, a variable, and it's uh, position x. And I'm, uh, right now it's like at 100, so if I set it to 400, you see how it moves, right? It changes its position across the screen here. Now for these demos, I'm only going to be working in the x axis. One, it's way simpler to kind of like understand if you're approaching this for the first time. And two, that's all I really needed when I was creating my um, carousel. I only need stuff to move across here. I'm not really concerned about um, doing 2D motions. I'm always worried across going left to right. All right, so back to position. I can change that, right? So, but, you know, this is just like changing something on screen. It's very, uh, not static, but, you know, juddery. This is not actually how motion works. If I'm a monkey, I don't, I don't expect things to work like this. Um, so if I wanted to actually add motion, it would look something like, you know, I change a little bit each time. And that's essentially what velocity is. And so I'm going to enable that in the code here. All right, and before we like, actually look at the other code, I'm just going to give us a review of this demo. It's about like 40 lines of code. Um, and just real briefly, we're using Canvas to render it. Um, we're going to have some variables here, position, velocity, friction. The update function is going to be changing our variables. And we're using frame-based animation here. So with each frame, things change. We do two things. We update our variables, and we render, um, in this case, the particle. And that's all this stuff is doing down here, is just rendering. Cool. I have a question. All right. Well, okay, so to like change the frames, I'm using this uh, browser feature, request animation frame, which pretty much does the set, same thing as set timeout, you know. What it does is like, do this, do this function again in 10 milliseconds, or, or you know, 17 milliseconds. That's what essentially request animation frame does here. Okay. That's a browser Yeah. All right. I'm learning too. I'm like, run, run loop, run loop. Don't, don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> like, dodge. <laughs> um, back on track. All right. I wanna, I wanna put this particle in motion here, um, and in order to do that, I'm gonna do it by uh, adding in velocity here. So in my update function, right now nothing's happening. I'm going to, and I guess we can all see this, I can zoom it in. Um, I'm gonna enable this line here where position is gonna be equal to position plus velocity. All right, so still the particle is not moving right now, but if I, but if I set velocity, I'm gonna set velocity to, it's on the array. I'm going to set it to negative one. All right, it's in motion. There we go. And if I set it to one, it moves towards the right. If I set it to zero, it stops. I can set it to a bigger value, like negative two. It moves a bit faster. Cool. Um, so I have a little diagram to show you kind of what's going on here. That's not it. Here he is. So. If we think of our, this is what's happening with each frame. We set the velocity to one, the position of the particle changes by one each frame. Plus one, plus one, plus one. If we set velocity to a smaller value, it, it's changing similarly, right, proportionally. Where now it's like not going one pixel, it's going a half a pixel each time. And if it's a bigger value, you know, it goes twice as much. Uh, in this case, if the uh, velocity is plus two. All right, let's take another look at our demo here. So we could set this particle in motion, but like it feels very mechanical. You know, it's like a claw game. This doesn't feel realistic. It's kind of just like floating in space here. If we were monkeys and we expect, you know, we were like throw a banana on the jungle floor, it kind of like slows down eventually. And so what's working on there is friction. And friction is, um, a decimal value. In this case, uh, we're using 0.95, and if we multiply that velocity by, it's going to be decreasing the uh, value of velocity with each frame. So let's enable that in our update function, and now we're going to set velocity to one. Oh, did you see it? It moved a little bit, and then it slowed down here. I'm going to now set it to 10. All right, this is looking good. Okay, nice, nice. Um, here's a diagram of like what's going on with friction. So previous, uh, 
it would, yeah, so if you multiply, it's going to be, um, this is like a very simple model, and um, this is an easy way to do friction. Another way to do it is friction as a force. Um, and I found, so but to your question, yes, it's going to be multiplying velocity by friction, and it's always going to be decreasing it, uh, getting to zero, either by both negative and positive, right? No, it, it, it's going to hit zero. Well, I mean, technically, like, if it is me. Yeah, it's a, Um, that's that's one way to do it. I found that this is very simple to kind of like both understand and actually to implement as opposed to like adding in conditionals and things like that. So I, I encourage you to absolutely explore that. But for my little um, model, I like this. Um, and let, 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 like, let's talk afterwards. There's probably something I'm like totally glazing over and there's like a NASA scientist in the background just like shaking <laughs> her head. I'll be a feminist in that hypothetical scenario. Okay, so let's take a look here. What's going on is that instead of um, velocity is 2, but it slows down with each point, so uh, each frame. So now it's 1.6, 1 1.3, 1, 1, right? We could see that the particle is slowing in motion. And if friction is a smaller decimal, like 0.5, it slows down even more. All right, so like these are the basics, right? We already got our three basics here. Position, velocity, friction. And, you know, this is already starting to, like, look pretty good. Like, this is how I, you know, if I'm, like, rolling the ball on the carpet, this is how I kind of, like, expect it to work. So I've got a little demo here where um, I'm dragging a particle. And this is working very similarly to, you know, if you used uh, jQuery UI draggable. So you can drag it, but you can't do, like, the release thing, right? Um, and just to give you a sense of what's going on here, we'll open up some of the code. And what I've got here is I've got this, uh, instead of also a position, I've got that drag position, right? I've got this drag position, and that's immediately what I'm setting the position of the particle to. So I'm setting pos position x, you should be drag position. And this is how most like draggable widgets kind of work. But now I want to sprinkle in some physics. So I'm going to, uh, in my update function, I'm going to stub this out, and I'm going to enable like this drag force kind of thing, and also enable uh, changing the variables with each time. I'm going to do a save here. All right, so I can drag, but now when I release, there it is. Ah, oh, yes. And I can do I can do all the things I was talking about. I can do a flick, big flick, flick and stop. You know, I got it. It's nice. Um, all right, all right, all right. Okay, this is cool. So th the way this one was working is that I was setting velocity um, directly. So that's one way to do it. But I want to get to the point where we're using forces because there might be another scenario where I want to change velocity difference. So setting it directly could um, be problematic. Just go with me on this one, all right? So uh, in this, I want to do it like this. And so this works just the same. All right, so now we're talking about forces talking about forces. Um, we did it. So now in our update uh, function, if we want to like um, add a force into this mix, in addition to updating the variables, in my update function, I'm going to add another line here where I'm like applying a force. And in our first kind of little demo, we're just going to be applying like a static force that we set. In this case, wind. It's going to be like pushing it one way or another here. Let's take a look at that demo. All right, so I've got my particle on the left there. I have this variable wind. Wind right now is zero. If I set wind to one, it starts moving across there. All right, so that was like a lot. So let's like make it down a little bit. So you can see it starts like edging into the, the motion or easing into the motion. If we set it to zero, right, it doesn't immediately stop. Now it kind of like slows down like this is this is looking good. This is what we want here. And just the same thing. We can like do that. I could reverse it. You know, it does like burp, 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 and then it starts going in the other direction. Um, all right, all right. So now we're using forces. Cool. 
So this was just using like a static force, just like applying it to like one side or another. But we can be a bit more smart about that, or smarter, some would say. <laughs> <laughs> um, right? So instead of just like uh, always pushing it left or always pushing it right, um, let's say we're trying to like push it closer to a target. Um, and if it's uh, on the left, we want to move it closer towards the right. And if it's on the right, we want to move it closer to the left. <laughs> but similarly, if it's, if it's closer to there, we, we don't want to move the distance by the same amount. It wants to be like proportional, right? All right, so like let's break this down in some kind of like math problems here. So we have like this distance between the position and the target, right? And that would be equal to like we have the target's uh, position and minus like the particle's position. So we have the distance between there. Now, if I want to get the force, the, that white arrow, well, we already have the distance, but I just want to make it a, a, a portion of that. So we can multiply that by uh, a decimal. In this case, like something like a, a value like strength. And this is what the code's going to look like here. So I'm, I'm going to be like dipping into code a little bit. I, you don't get too tied up in it. It's more like we're trying to like figure out like the basic principles here. Um, but you know, this is just how, how it looks. We have the target's position and the distance multiplied by the strength, and then we're applying that force um, in the update function. All right. Let's take a look at um, at the demo. <laughs> so in this demo here, I have the particle, and I also have a target. Right now, they're on top of one another. And I can click to change the target, and let's see what happens here. Ooh, now we got a wobble going on. Right, now, now this is like, okay. And I also have these variables, like attraction, strength, and friction. Right now, let's take a look at attraction strength. That's set to like 0.01. And like the, some of this is like fuzzy math, right? Like this was something that I was like, eh, that, that, that feels about right. Um, I'm going to set it to 0.4. And now if I click, all right, now it's moving fast. And there's like a lot more wobble. Um, and I have friction. So uh, let's see what friction's set to. 0 0.09, I'm going to set it to 0.08. All right, so now it moves, still moves fast because we have that higher attraction, but it doesn't wobble as much. So we can play around with these variables and kind of get like a, a good kind of feel here. So in that, that previous demo, the particle was always attracted to the target, no matter where the particle was on the screen, right? Um, and the further away from it is, the higher the attraction is. But what if we were to, you know, kind of put a condition around it, saying like only if it's within these parameters attracted wi within there? Okay, let's take a look at that. All right, so here I'm able to drag the particle in this case, and if it's outside the bounds, it moves just sim it, you know, moves like uh, our original like drag demo. But if it's inside the bounds there, oh, get there. <laughs> um, Let's see what happens. All right. So this kind of interaction here would be like pretty useful if let's say you had like a draggable element and you could say like, hey, swipe to dismiss. Um, so, you know, people could like swipe it out of there. But if they do something where they like press down a little bit and then just move a little bit and they're like, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, it can like wobble back in there. So this is actually kind of useful. Um, we can also do two things where now we have like multiple areas of attraction, right? where you can like flick it out of one and into another. Or you, know, you can even do stuff where you can like flick it past there. Cool. So previously when we were doing attraction, it's always been like attracting it toward the center. But if we set attraction to like a negative value, it would be like pushing it out from there. So let's do that. Right now attraction strength is that. I'm going to set it to negative 0.02. So let's see how it reacts. It kind of gets pushed out of the that zone, but you can s I'm sorry? <laughs> Repulsion, right? Yeah. It's being repulsed. Um, so this could be something else where you're like, you don't want it to end up in an area, or maybe 
you don't want a draggable thing to like land in a certain place, but you can still like get past it if you just drag it. Like you can still drag past it, but no matter what, it's never going to land up there. Um, cool. Now, you can also do like other stuff with the the code here. This is instead of it being previously when it was uh, this kind of dynamic where there's less attraction in the center. What if it was like working like a planet where like the closer you get to the planet, the more the attraction or the more the gravity is here. So let's see what happens here. So it kind of slips into there <laughs> and then it starts like shaking. It's like a fun side effect. Like what's happening here, it's like essentially going like through the planet, coming back the other end and like, like your body would be crushed. But in this case, that's how, <laughs> that, that's how, that's how this demo works. So you probably don't want that, and um, so like I, I just like hacked a solution where it's like if it's in the center, right? Just like just make it stop. So if it's like in that center area, um, so now it can slide in there, and it stops. And you might look at this and be like, well, that like looks kind of unnatural, but that's this might be the um, the motion you kind of want, where like. Uh, you have a scroll kind of area, but once you get to like the bottom of that scroll, it's like you're at the bottom, you know? It just kind of like eases you right into it. Or you can, uh, it, this still works, but it still slides past there. So all these little kind of motions and things like that, these are all the things that I needed to, to build my carousel. And it's called Flickety, so let's take a look at how it works here. And so Flickety is a, a carousel widget, um, you know, you have content, uh, arranged like left to the right. And so I can do all these things where, you know, I can flick it. That feels good. But it's not just like it's always the same motion. Like if I give it a big flick, it kind of like wobbles a bit more. Or if you can give like a bigger one or a more big one, and it like goes to two spaces. Um, and all these other like little interactions, um, they work seamlessly. So if, if I uh, just scroll a I move it, scroll to the left, but I'm like, you know what, uh, I want to go back a little bit. It's like, there's, it works just fine. Like, it works as you would expect. Um, and all these, you know, now we're changing the sizes of like the conditional area where the thing gets attracted to. So the size of the content can be different. Or we'd like, it's like stop using attraction altogether and just like let uh, friction and the force of the drag or the velocity of the drag work. So this one, there's like, it's not aligning to any like one area. There's also like that, this one kind of still has the bounds off the back, but we'll get to that. And then, you know, I, I was able to do something where um, instead of just like ending at one, you can like rearrange it so you can just keep on flicking, man. Like <laughs> imagine the engagement that your users will have once you add this in. Um, all right, all right. So we, uh, we got through a couple of these things. All right, so the bonus, the real whamma jamma. Um, Steve Jobs, when he, when he introduced the uh, iPhone, there was this like one thing at the end here, and it's like so fascinating because it's kind of like how you would expect something to work where, like what, what is this? It's not like like unrolling like a toilet paper roll or something like that. It's, but like, you know, it kind of like goes back to the end. But also, it's not just like it bounces back, but it bounces back so that the top of the content perfectly aligns to like the top of the scroll area. And this is kind of like a, a, a holy grail of like scroll demos. And they all have like different ways of doing it. And it's all kind of like weird. And so I, I tried to give it a shot here. And I don't mean to say like I cracked it, but I've put a dent, an awkward dent into it. Um, so let's, let's take a look at, at like the initial demo, right? So we had that re repulsion thing going on in one of these. Is this still working here, right? So this is kind of like part of it. So uh, I'm going to close a bunch of these. <clears throat> um, and pay no attention. Well, I'll talk about the green dot later. But in this demo here, I have this area, the bounds, that line, where I don't want the dot, the particle, to move, to ever be past it, right? So I have this repulsion area, which is similar to that uh, kind of the blue dot repulsion demo, where if it's over there, it gets bounced back. So it does bounce back, and the dot never stays up there. And, you know, this kind of is fun. You know, it's like you're 
playing volleyball with yourself. Um, but it, it's not, it's not the, the demo that we expected. We want that dot to land right on the line, not past it. So we can be smart about it, just like we did with that like gravity well thing, like adding in a conditional. Um, and so my solution here was that this green dot, what's actually going on here is that it's calculating the resting position after a drag. And in case you're curious, um, this, this is the equation to do it. And I got this equation because I, I was doing it a poor way, and then I reached out, or a colleague reached out to me, Stephen Winton, who's like brilliant echo.net. Um, it's like really far out demos. And he knows calculus. <laughs> and so I, I, I'm not familiar with calculus. So if, if, if you ask me why this works, I'd say because calculus. Um, <laughs> but the, the result of it is that we can do these things, and it's like almost uncanny. You're like, no way it's going to end up there. And it, and it does. <laughs> It does it every time. So I can use that now to say, all right, if it's gonna, if the force is going to be beyond the line, that's cool, because I want it to like, kind of stay over the line. But if the force is gonna make it land to the left of the line, I don't wanna do that. I wanna change the force there. And again, I don't wanna get too tied up in the code here, but that's, that's the general principle here. So, um, Previously, is just applying like a repulsion force. But now what we're going to be doing is if it's on the other side of the line, we're going to kind of calculate where we want it to be and then like adjust the force a little bit. So all right, let's, let's give it a flick. There it is. We got that rubber band. All right. And you can see like the green dot eventually gets closer and closer because it's like uh, always readjusting. There's, again, there's, there's probably a much better way to do it, but like this, this actually works. Um, and so you, know, you can actually put this into a practical application here, right, where we have like a, a scrolling photo, and, and now it's got that little bouncy stuff. And I'm sure you're looking at this and it's like, we're like we, are, we already have that. Like you don't need to like re-implement this in JS, but you might. <laughs> <laughs> there might be a time where you have like this like draggy thing, and uh, you're like, ah, oh, that wouldn't, it kind of has the thing now you can do it. Um, you can do it. You can do it. You absolutely can do it. So this is what I want to, you, you to take with you, is that th this is the whole model here, right? Where you were talking about, uh, like, shouldn't friction be kind of like smaller ones? Like, you're right, but this one is one I can get my, my head around and I can actually use. And I'm sure everybody here can um, start using it too. So you can absolutely do this. Um, if you are interested in this, I recommend uh, these two resources, Nature of Code and the Coding Math videos, which kind of go into like slower, kind of step-by-step about what is velocity and how these things work together. Uh, I'll be putting the stuff up on CodePen and GitHub later. And if you're looking for a carousel, may I recommend? Um, I also have some like stickers and, and t-shirts and things like that. So feel free to come talk to me. And thank you for your time.